Hi, everybody. My name is Alexander White Brown, and I am a clinical coordinator working out of the Medical Genetics Unit at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario in Ottawa, Canada. I'm also a member of the Medical Advisory Board for the newly established Shine Syndrome Foundation. And the Shine Syndrome Foundation has asked me to put together a couple of videos to go over some of the frequently asked questions regarding Shine Syndrome, as well as some questions regarding the DLG4 gene itself. So I thought I'd start off by putting together a video briefly overviewing the DLG4 gene and going through some of the common questions that might come up with regards to that gene. So the first thing that I wanted to discuss is that DLG4 is a gene that is located on chromosome 17. It has 22 exons, which means it has 22 coding regions. I'm also going to be putting together a video that will go into more information about what those coding regions mean and about the different types of variants or mutations that can be seen in this gene. Secondly, I wanted to discuss that DLG4 is very important for brain development and how the brain communicates with not just itself, but also with other parts of the body. DLG4 produces a protein called PSD95 or postsynaptic density 95, which is extremely important in the development and function of synapses. Now, synapses are very important for the communication between neurons, which are also called brain cells. And it is very important that these neurons and brain cells communicate with each other in a certain way. Now, mutations or variants in the DLG4 gene can change the way that the PSD95 protein is produced, and this can affect the way that these neurons and synapses communicate with each other. And overall, that can have a very large impact on how the brain develops. Lastly, I wanted to discuss that DLG4 is associated with what we call an autosomal dominant disorder. So some of you may have heard various names for the condition associated with DLG4, whether it be DLG4-related disorder, DLG4 synaptopathy, or the newly denoted SHINE syndrome, which stands for sleep disturbances, hypotonia, intellectual disabilities, neurological symptoms, and epilepsy. So this condition, now known as SHINE syndrome, is inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion. So if we think back to high school or elementary biology, we inherit our genes from both parents. We inherit two copies of every gene inside of chromosomes, one from our father and one from our mother. So overall, we have 23 chromosomes inherited from our mother and 23 inherited from our father. We can think of chromosomes like libraries. And inside those libraries, the shelves of books can be considered the DNA. And if we think of DLG4 as one of those books inside of those shelves, so inside the DNA, we would expect that book to be spelled in a certain way that makes it readable, it makes it understandable. Now, if there is a spelling change in that book that makes it not be read the way that we would expect it to be read. It can change the way that we perceive it. It can change the way that it functions. And it's the very same for genetic changes called variants or mutations on genes. And as you can see from this diagram right here, only one copy of the DLG4 gene needs to have a pathogenic, or what we call a disease-causing variant or mutation to cause Shine syndrome. The other copy of the gene is often unaffected and doesn't have a change on it. Now, some of you may be thinking, if that genetic code and the genes get inherited from parents, why aren't the parents affected? And that's a really good question. For most patients with DLG4-related disorder or Shine syndrome, it's often a genetic change or variant that is seen for the first time. And this often happens after conception when the egg meets the sperm. And therefore, the genetic change is not found in the parents, but it is new in the child or the patient. There are also instances of when a parent can pass on a genetic change, and this could be called mosaicism. And this is where the genetic change might be found in some cells, but not all of the cells. However, when it's passed down to a child, it does get expressed in all of their cells. If anybody has any questions with regards to mosaicism, I'm also going to be leaving my email address and you can reach out with any more questions you might have about mosaicism or the inheritance of DLG4. 
or for that matter, any questions that you might have regarding the DLG 4 gene. The next video that I'll be putting together will be with regards to PSD95, the protein produced by DLG4, and going into how it functions and how it plays such an important role for brain development and brain communication.